Hello. Welcome back. So, how is your week uh, going along? Mine's fine. We uh, just had uh, King's Day yesterday in the Netherlands, so I wasn't coding yesterday. Uh, I was busy celebrating, partying. At home, of course, because we have to be at home. Um, and today I will uh, pick up where uh, we left off. I thought I was done with the whole warm-up and initialization of my app service. But after having spoken to a couple of my co-workers, uh, I've discovered something new which I want to try out, which is how to warm up your app service when you're going uh, when you're busy doing uh, uh, doing .NET Core development, so uh, I don't know if you knew this already, uh, but uh, I'm learning something new today. So hopefully you will also. Um, anything uh, I should uh, should uh, do or try out next time? Please let me know, and uh, I, I will. Uh, do some research on the matter and try to do the coding uh, live. But for now, I will be trying to do uh, health checks. Thank you, Hank, for the for the follow, follow. Thank you, much appreciated. So uh, to the coding. Um, as you might remember, I did something something hacky last time. Um, I was busy implementing health checks and afterwards was doing something for warm warming up my, my app service. And in the end, I've created some hosted service, which was spun when, uh, well, actually uh, starting up the, apps, uh, the app service, the application, and it set some completed flag in the, in the code. So either the host service or the health check will set this flag and fill the cache. So I wasn't very happy with this last week when I was implementing it, but I couldn't find any other solution. Luckily, like I mentioned, uh, my coworker did, uh, Evan Stahl, you might uh, know him. He's uh, also, uh, well, he's, he speaks a lot around the world, mostly Europe, but also other continents, um, and he discovered some some settings you can uh, uh, set in your app service uh, to do some warming up. So let me go to the browser, to documentation, <laughs> and over here we have the application initialization, which I talked about last time and which works well properly when you have a web.config file. But in the .NET Core world, we don't have this file anymore. I tried um, uploading it manually to the to the app service, but to no avail. Also tried patching it, uh, the application with it, didn't work. So luckily, there's uh, another par paragraph over here, which states you can use some uh, environment variables. Cool, right? So this is what I want to try uh, today. So apparently I need some endpoint, let's say status check, and I can also specify which result codes are valid. And seeing the name, this will also stop or, or complete the swap. Uh, the warm-up and swap options operation are stopped. So, um, Add this app setting with a common separate list of HTTP codes. If the return states code isn't in the list, the warm-up and swap operations are stopped. So this happens during swap, which is actually what we want because during the swap we want to, well, do some uh, warming up, uh, like spinning up the DB context, adding a connection to the Redis cache. Um, already well making the clients for my uh, storage queues or whatever uh, expensive stuff uh, spinning up the IOC container so uh, let's try to do this I will 
first uh, well remove this hacky stuff for now uh, because I'm not happy with it and this shouldn't exist because it's hacky um, but I, I'll leave it in, in some some old old file <coughs> let me also turn on the music and well start hacking away so first of all I, I want to keep this stuff for now well do I we have version control, right? Remove. And if I was, if I ever want to see the stuff again, I can just watch my previous shows on the YouTube channel of me. Um, you can uh, find you can find the links in in the well, in in my page here on Twitch, or on Twitter or wherever. Uh, I'm link. I'm linking everywhere. So our startup task completed. We can remove this volatile stuff. Uh, this way. I can also remove this. Much cleaner. And if you remember correctly, last time we well we saw the this health check will be invoked every 30 seconds. So I will keep this over here. This sounds good. Oh yeah, what, what this does is checking if we still uh, can access the, the backend services. So if you get an unauthorized or forbidden. So from my local machine, I should probably receive unauthorized and my app service receives a forbidden. And the reason for this is, well, I still have to do some investigation on it. But let's just check the implementation. What I'm doing over here is creating a new HTTP client and making a GET request to the endpoint of my backend API. And I'm not specifying an authorization header over here, which is important. And I should be doing this uh, in order to make an authorized request to the backend service. And because, well, that's what we set up in the previous uh, uh, sessions. So this shouldn't work, so I should be getting an unauthorized. Apparently I don't. Uh, that's from my local machine. From an app service, however, I'm receiving the forbidden. And I'm not quite sure why this is. Probably because in the app service, I'm invoking the, the request within the Azure space. So it probably has some knowledge of the identity of the identity but it's still strange it would modify my http request if you know the answer please let me know in in the chat or on twitter or wherever uh, i'm eager to know why this why these uh, have different status codes at the moment i haven't have spent any time investigating it so if I'm getting this, then it should be healthy. Oh yeah, and if the site is disabled, well, you can. An unhealthy got states code. Okay, cool. So we can. This sounds good. Cleaning up. How about the startup? Is it still? I'm. This quickly, hmm, this quickly is worth slow. Well, anyway, I don't need this hosted service anymore. <coughs> I don't need this one anymore. Because it's not a singleton anymore, it's the health check. And I don't need to have some static field or property or whatever anymore. So, there's that. And we should be publishing this to Application Insights. Let's see where Fork is. It, it should be on one of my screens. There it is. So this is, yes, the proper. So 
show that they just remove the push and pushing it so a commit will uh, no, the commit will be pushed and it will be deployed to Azure in a couple of minutes so let's continue with uh, the stuff Erwin found and I'm what to try today is adding these environment uh, variables or parameters so these sh should be set via the arm template Do this projects secure deployment opening up with code. Has been detected. Do you want to use a parameter file? Uh, yes. That's a nice question. Oh, I've got eight warnings stuff. Why? Oh. Yeah. Let's before before oh yeah. Let's check if this API version is correct. So arm um, template resource manager template reference so what was it complaining about the API version of the server farm web it's a web server farm server farm 2019 what do I have specified over here 0801 yeah I guess this this ARM template plugin isn't up to date. It's so annoying. It it makes squigglies all over the place and it's incorrect. If you know, Monty. The question you got. Um, I don't remember. Um, I have a lot of questions. So the one of the questions I had was was um, what question did I have? While opening VS Code, you were presented with a nice question. But I couldn't read it. Ah, it uh, VS Code was asking, uh, well, was stating, hey, I found a parameters file over here. Do you want to link it uh, with, well, the, the ARM template? Uh, I've, I've got the convention uh, secure api.deployment.json and secure api.deployment.parameters.json. And apparently the, the ARM template plugin uh, extension now sees hey they're there well they seem to be connected so let's well connect them I don't know what it does underneath I guess it, it checks if these values over here are valid and if not uh, let's let's check it so I can uh, values a allowed values is oh it's probably some yeah a comma b so I expect because I said yes and they are linked now if I will be sorry apparently I can't do Embedded JSON apparently allowed values. The parameter is not part of the allowed values. Yes, 
So if I do which was this authority? So if I'm doing C over here, oh, save, allowed values, line seven, column twenty four. That's over here. <laughs> Why am I getting a squiggly? So if I make this A, it's gone. Yeah, so that's probably it. So now that they're linked and I have the allowed values over here, A and B, and I'm filling out C in the parameter file, I will get an error in my main template. This is kind of cool. This should help you with the development. Downside is I'm getting the error over here instead of the parameter file. Because I don't see any validation over here or squigglies. But it, this is kind of useful. So I'll, I'll remove it because... But that was uh, the question or the remark I got in VS Code if I want to link the stuff. Yeah, indeed, indeed, Monty. I didn't know this either. So, do I have the app settings over here? Yeah, these are the app settings of my backend for frontend API. So there's, for the people new to this solution, uh, I've got these three services, so the my main API where clients can connect to. So this is the backend for frontend, and I have two other services in the backend, which are well invoked via my backend for frontend service. So in this ARM template, I've also got three app services being deployed with, well, kind of the same values. You can see it in, uh, in Azure. I've got them set up. Um, resource group, live code in the secure API. So they're deployed. Also got an App Insights instance running, which I'll be using today for real, because I want to check the, the logging messages and the warming up messages. So this is all being deployed. Let's go back to, uh, let's just copy this setting. So this will be the endpoint, which has to be invoked. And this is the error codes or the states codes uh, I'm allowing. So I guess a 200. So I need to go to the app settings of the backend for frontend. This one. So this is the resource, this is the site. And this, these are the app settings. Placing it over here. The ping path is uh, API slash warm up. I have to prefix it with a slash, if I'm not mistaken. And also the point statuses should be comma separated. Uh, but I only want to allow a 200, so no commas needed. I think this is all there is to it for the for this service. So I could also do this on all of the other services, but I won't be doing it for now because I just want to test it over here. So let's commit these changes. And just warm up um, settings. I'm not pushing because I don't want to deploy it just yet. Uh, because this endpoint doesn't exist. Simple as that. Visual Studio. 
So let's uh, let's create the warm-up controller. So add new controller API empty. If this works in one go, it will be a very short session today. Which is great, because last Saturday I started to do a Harry Potter marathon uh, uh, with my wife. And at the moment we're halfway in part 4. So we still have to do well the second half of part 4, 5, 6 and 7. And we discovered all of these movies are about 2 hours to 2 and a half hours, which was a bit longer as we expected. We've seen all of the all of them in the past couple of years already when they were released. Still, we were like, yeah, let's watch them all in a row. We can't do 12 hour or 20 hour binge sessions anymore because our kids are two and three years old. So they wake up at seven o'clock or earlier. And it's kind of a bad practice when doing parenting and well, having the kids uh, uh, yeah, being, being left to themselves, so we have to be responsible adults and go to bed at an appropriate time. So let's uh, continue with the warm up so I can continue with Harry Potter. So the warm up. Um, I should be doing some some well long running stuff over here, stuff which will take some time. Uh, but I don't have a DB context yet. I'm not using storage accounts. I don't have Redis uh, implemented. Uh, so I think a thread.sleep or task.delay will suffice for now in order to prove the point of the swapping. Uh, well, the swapping work. So uh, warm up. What did I uh, mention? It, it it was a get, right? So uh, API warm up without anything special. So uh, public task uh, action result get uh, specifying HTTP get because. Specifying the stuff return, okay. Squiggy, okay. Um, oh, sure, it has to be. Um, uh, let's make it like this. I want it. Delay. Let's make it five seconds longer. How long do we want to? Let's, let's make it ten seconds. Ten seconds is a long wait when doing demos, especially if it's going wrong. Let's make it five for for testing it locally. I don't see how I could mess this up, but you never know. Um, is this the starter project? Yes, it is. <coughs> Healthy. That's the health endpoint. API slash warm up. So this should take five seconds now, because that's what we specified, and it's a oh a 200. It might be useful to might have been useful to do some thing in the body. I don't have a fav icon. Yeah, I know. So this is a 200. This is good. Uh, let's do some logging. Uh, 
Cool. Um, mm -hmm. Let's make pretty. Okay, executing. Execute this. Okay, so this is good. The studio stopped responding for 10 seconds. It's because of the sharper. Yeah, it keeps telling me this. I don't believe it. Sure, the sharper does have a slight performance hit, but the way Phil Studio keeps complaining about it, I don't believe it anymore. Okay, cool. So this this still works. Let's also, did I have some logging over here? Yeah. The warm-up controller weather forecast. I don't have any logging over here. I also wanted, I do have some logging over here. So this is good. Executing, executed. Uh, let's not do everything in one commit. Let's make it a bit. Uh, discard. So adding the warm-up controller. Commit also. Yes. Um, <coughs> extract method. Invoke speaker service. Okay. Never. But. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Hmm. Back. So let's. Uh... Okay. Response is um, API. Oh, make call details. Uh, this will be a better extraction. Still wants to strange. Well, I'll do it myself then. Private. Is this, yeah, this facing task. Hmm. Let's do this. Cut, paste, return. Oh, this font is invoke speaker service. Okay, and this should be awaited. <coughs> Not all code paths, yeah. Return all details. It generates access token. A bit refactoring over here. Why? Oh, this. 
zeg. So, this probably bar next. Okay. Over here, let's make it a bit more readable on one line. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. tap. Okay. So it's a bit long, in my opinion, this method, but it's... Hmm. I can live with this for now. Yeah. But do I still need this? I don't think so. Let's also do some uh, cleaning up. Methods. It's still called weather forecast controller. Should I change it? Yeah, I should. Mm. So how will I call it? It's kind of a testing controller. It's the get I'm interested in. So um should I call it? It's invoking the backend services to test if they're operational. <sighs> Naming is hard. Test backend controller. Okay, yes. So this has been renamed. Let's see if it still works. API slash uh, Yes, that end. Fingers crossed. Four oh four. So test backend API controller. Weather. Oh, it was without the API. <coughs> Apparently. But this looks a bit better. Yeah. Okay, my bad, my bad. It was without the API prefix. So it still works as expected. I can deploy this. And I will be pushing this right now. 
in order to get this stuff deployed to Azure because what I have now as well, the, the controller we had all the time already. Now let me see my, my hand is, whoa, away. Let's see if I can, whoa, okay. Hmm. I shouldn't make big gestures because I will fall off screen. Um, so anyway, I got this test backend controller, which is the same which we got, well, all the time. And we have the warm-up controller, which is new. I'm doing some logging over here and a task delay in order to fake long running operations. I don't think I have a staging slot already. Um, let, let's check in Azure first. Uh, otherwise I'll... Deployment slots. Oh yeah, yeah. For some reason, Firefox doesn't work nice anymore uh, or in my system with the Azure portal. I don't know why, it's probably plugin related. So let me check uh, in, in Edge, sign in with a different account. personal account so I'll put this on screen any minute there it is so it's this one zooming in a bit so do I have deployment slots already no so this means I should be adding a new slot Uh, yeah, I should be adding a new slot. The warm-up probably also happens, or I expect the warm-up also happens when deploying to the production slot and you have downtime of X seconds. Five in my case. But I also want a staging slot now. So let's see, set up staging environments. Do they have some templates over here? No. Resource Manager Template Guidance. <coughs> Would be great if I could just copy paste something. I've done this dozens of times, but most of the time I can just copy paste the JSON I need, like slash slots or something. Slots. So it's websites that slots. Well, this is a lot of stuff. I don't need everything if I'm remembering correctly. Um, let me check. Slots. So there's a lot of non required stuff, which is great. Oh, well, let's let me start with the most easiest. Part. Uh, the properties, and that's uh, well, this stuff enabled might also be useful. So, PS Code websites, this is the next one. So, I'll be adding it over here.
closing. So this sh should be eighth boolean true. Okay. Staging. Website slots. Um, I need a different notation over here. Web sites. Oh, I need the slots. Then I need to specify uh, like with the app settings. I have the websites, the app settings, type slots. Depends on so this one. Tabs. So this isn't correct either. Template resource staging, light 119, column 21, properties invalid. So that's first kind of resource. This is only necessary for function apps, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> There's no example over here. Resource location. Let's first continue with this stuff. Dot location. But this isn't mandatory. Tags aren't either. I'm not using them over here also, yeah. Okay, so I can just delete them. Properties. Properties. Nothing true if the app is enabled. I kind of think this one is mandatory. Server farm ID. Depends on hmm, the site. Also has a server farm ID. So this is the actual site. Does my staging slot also need an identity? I think so. Because it's a different site running. So it makes sense to have have an identity. Properties identity depends on resources. Oh, I'm making sub -re child resources over here. That's why this doesn't work. Let's make. Um, mm -hmm. So now the squiggly is gone. Okay, so we solved the squiggly. But I think I'd rather have it with a different notation, which is this set the name and type of child resources. Resources, child resources. So this is what we did now, outside parent resource. So this is prettier, in my opinion. So they have it outside. Um, so what do you have over here? The child resource is type subnets. And if you specify it outside the scope of the, well, parent, you have to specify this whole thing. And have a depends on. Is this how you do it? Include the parent type and name. Name. 
Okay. This is better, in my opinion. Let's let's try it. Because for settings and configuration values, I don't mind, but staging slot is well, it is a different resource, and a staging slot can also have well child resources. So this should be web. Why is it called web? What the? That doesn't make sense. Websites kind is an app. Name. So I need like this over here. So I want to have it called staging. Um, Concat. Concatenate. Comma. Staging. Why? Concatenate. Oh, sorry. So, making this work. So uh, now I have a staging slot. It has to be of the type Microsoft Sites Slots. Okay, API version is correct. It has a dependency on the website. This makes sense, to me at least. And we have the server form. And we need an additional comma now. Pretty printing. Oh, my water is out. Oh. We look at the time. I'll fetch some water. Uh, no, no, no. I'll just check if this works. <coughs> this should work. Mm, probably. Do I need all of this stuff also? Yeah. I'll just copy paste this block. So it's resources copy. Opening up the terminal. Hopefully I'm logged in in the correct um, correct subscription. So which subscription is this? V2, okay. So I have to change. Um, development CLI commands. AZ. I'm doing this on the other screen. One moment. Why am I typing when I can just copy paste the command? Okay, there's done. And now I need to deploy this stuff. CD uh, your APIs slash deployment. There. So these are my files. Um, so the names are still. I had this in my in my OneNote file. Uh, so I copy paste this. I stored this last time, and apparently it was still there. So this is live handling secure API. Sounds good. See if it's valid. Apparently enough. Doesn't depend on parent resource. Depends on syntax. So I have to depend on the resource. 
config web. Okay, so this one needs to make sense because I just copy pasted it from the other part. Config web. So it needs to depend on for my comma slash staging. Same goes for this one. Well, okay. There's ah, add this. So when copy pasting this stuff. You have to specify the dependency of this nested part via the depends on. This makes sense, or at least I hope this is it. So let's try it again. Still not correct. The resource identifier identificator is wrong, it's malformed. template resource web mm -hmm. what if I make this no this should be correct I think, apparently not, but I would think this is correct. So if you have any ideas in the chat, let me know. Let me just Google this. The the resource identify identif well the resource identificator is malformed. Resource identicate is not on. So this this kind of looks right. Maybe the slash isn't correct. Answer. Somewhere in template you constructed the resource. So it depends on. Okay. Oh, I don't need the slash, so I need something like this. Uh, let me read it a bit more. It works. So this is kind of a short question. So this, this person has a great answer. I should have found it. Who's this? Thompson. Ah, yeah, he, know, he knows his stuff around the ARM templates. So over here, I need the resource ID, website slots. So there's this one, X. And with staging. Let me also call it with a capital S. Name it with a capital S. Oh, am I? Staging. Because I like having the capital S over here. It, it's, it looks a bit prettier in the portal if you ever want to watch it in the portal. 
So the CLI command still wrong. Yes, I also need to do this in the app settings, of course. It is running. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll grabbing some water. See you in a jiffy. And I'm back. So the water sink is right behind me. So I don't have to walk that far. The deployment is still running. I have to do this all over again uh, via the continuous deployment cycle because some secrets have to be filled out over there. So it has succeeded. <clears throat> this means we should now have a staging slot inside the portal. It's not operational because most settings aren't there yet, but it should be there. So deployment slots. And here it is, a staging slot. That's great. Now that that one's over here, I can uh, change the deployment pipeline to do the deployment to the actual staging slot and when it's done doing a swap so having a professional uh, deployment cycle so i already upvoted this answer yes i did cool let me head to azure devops where we have our release pipeline This should be edited. <clears throat> so I'm getting a comment. The music is a bit too loud. I'm turning it down a bit. It's at 32. The volume is at 32% right now. Hopefully it's better now. If not, please let me know. So I'm deploying the infrastructure and I'm deploying the API. So this infrastructure will make sure the staging slot will be deployed. And there's that. I'm getting a thumbs up from one of my viewers. So thank you for the comment. Much appreciated. So because we have slots now, I can deploy my new application, which is being built in the pipelines. Also to the slot. So let's see if it's here. Resource group. And we have the production slot and the staging slot. Cool. So that's what I wanted. Deploy to staging. So there's the deploy to staging. Let me save it. Deploying to stage staging slot. And now when all the stuff is being deployed, I'm done with the deployment. So I should be doing this for the other app services also. I can add a management step to all. Swap slots. Swap. Swap. 
pop up for the clients. The production. <coughs> so I'm in MVP2, swap slots. And this one, the secure API. But strange, it needs the resource group because the app service is already in a resource group. I don't know why I need to specify this in this order. Probably has a reason. So source, swap with production. That's what I want for now. So nothing else. This is all good. This is all good. So nothing else. Just swap and I don't have VNets yet. I probably want to play with VNets later on because they're awesome. Uh, there is a lot of stuff happening with the VNets. App services have integration now. You might have seen the, the, blo the blog post from the team having a private link in Preview or GA. I don't remember. Uh, it was announced at the same time as Cosmos DB private link. And all of this VNet and private link stuff is great stuff. It's just, I don't do a lot with it because I'm a dev and networking is, well, something I've did way, way, way back. It's still very interesting and that's why I want to play with it later on. Uh, but for now, I'll just uh, continue with, with well, the, the regular stuff I have going on over here. So there's the swapping. Swapping API to production. Cool. Now there's this. So the deployment pipeline is set up. I don't have to change anything in the build pipeline. This means I should be able to check this stuff in or check in, that's that's old school, that's me doing old school talk. I mean committing, because that's what the hipsters say nowadays. Yes, so added staging slots to my A to API service. Pushing it. been pushed so the build pipeline is running yes most of the time this takes about five minutes to complete let's see how long it takes now <coughs> I won't be waiting for it by the way let me check application insights if there's something useful which has happened in the past four hours been streaming for one hour now so let's make it one hour invalid URI base address must be set that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting uh, error it's in the speaker service Check service, move next. So what is it? HTTP client. HTTP client doing a request. Let me zoom in a bit. This I can copy this show it in code, which has a bit better zooming capabilities. So what do we have? The speak health, this is the health check. Move check service, what's the move next? I don't know why I would do a move next. Anyway, there's probably something wrong in the health checking at the moment. Let me, oh, that's right. So what I, I have this parameter file. So these URLs are being uh, filled with uh, yeah filled out in Azure DevOps 
I don't have them uh, and I've just deployed my my uh, application let, let me show you in Azure DevOps what I'm doing so there's this step edit um, deploy infrastructure so I have a couple of settings and well a lot of settings I'm setting over here um, and I've just deployed it manually via the Windows terminal and that's why the stuff is failing at the moment uh, because these settings are empty so the base URL is an empty string so I'm doing an HTTP GET to a slash endpoint doesn't work if there's not a host name so this actually makes sense these exceptions it's great to see they are caught so any other yeah. health check works the publisher works okay cool I don't see a lot of so the health health check works I, I see traces if you have core health check speak, speaker API health I don't see any this is what level I think informational I'd say this is informational how can I check this custom event so it's, it's a custom event it's not uh, it's not a logging message so it's tr different what am I logging um, which level am I logging at? I thought it was uh, informational. But I don't see a lot of um, executing. So, expect you can. I don't see any events in Application Insights stating executing. And I have this one. And the speaker service is also logging stuff, executing health. So I see stuff happening. I see stuff happening. I don't see logging happening. So I had added application insights. Do I need to do I need to specify the instrumentation key over here? I didn't think so. I looked this up when adding it. So let's let's look it up again just to be sure. Um, add application insights. The logger factory. So I don't have the logger factory. I just want to do this. This that logger. Yes, this is what I want to do. Okay, so this person has to start up. So both parts doing all of this stuff, configuring, logger factory, add application. Oh, this is, I don't have, no, no, this is being handled in the program. So this, I also have this stuff, 2017, which is a long time ago in the core world. <coughs> to enable the more details. So what is this person? Who is this? Brando. So, mm -hmm. these are all answers of, this is a new one from this year.
builder mm. this is from 2020 it is so let me have this normally let me make this a bit smaller so I want to see that here's the documentation this is 2019 control logging level xp.net core main Yes, so this can't I toggle this? Hmm. It's required if you're using standalone. Okay, am I using the standalone package? I'm using App Insights, I don't know which package it is in. So, extension logging application insights. No, I'm not using that package. It doesn't hurt specifying. Apply filters. Well, let's just use. Uh, I've got this. What will the builder? Uh, hmm. Can I access the? Can I access the app settings over here or the settings? I key. What's this? HP at core. Application insights logging provider is enabled. Add application in the iShrimp collection. So, according to this, I don't need. Okay, so I only need this part, and if I'm using well, the standalone package, I need this. Uh, clean up. 
startup and application insights telemetry what it did state is only warnings and higher percent application insights so on how to specify filters of level default Mm Okay, perhaps I should add this part and have a default solution explorer. Logging, log level, default, warning. application insert well we just copy paste this again default default information so I want to have my informational logs also in application insights or at least that's what I'm hoping for fork Unnecessary code. Okay, pushing it. So how is my deployment doing? This one failed. Why? The swap failed. Can I swap slots? Took too long or failed? That's actually a good thing. Still, why did it fail? It would be great if I had some additional information over here. Can I swap slots? App initialization. Please check the app in the module. What's it stating? I'll try using swap with preview if application issues. Swap with preview. What's swap with preview? Edit the complete pipeline. Swap with preview. So I don't have any preview steps. And I don't see any preview things going on over there. and it only takes five seconds all right i have this task delay set to five seconds if i'm not mistaken warm-up controller yeah milliseconds delay so this endpoint should be on the staging slot now And I'll be heading there.
Oh ja, yeah. I need edge for this. So, the staging slot. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this is 404. Mm -hmm. This seems about right. Five seconds, which is what I expect. So how long can it take? Maybe there's some line stating it should be done within two seconds. Uh, back, back. Okay. Before swapping, it's strange a five second delay would result in, in this stuff failing. Troubleshooting. Wait 90 seconds for each HTTP request. So, 90 seconds. So there is some log file. I can probably look it up. Opening up Kudu. Um, where is it? Hmm. I'm in the reason. I'm in the wrong one. So oh, um, Kudu advanced tools. Go. It's getting late already, so I probably need to stop any minute now, which is too bad because I didn't quite got to do what I wanted. Well, my stuff is deployed, so that's good, but the swap is failing for some reason <coughs> of the debug console. love to know why search no. log files event log so downloading it <laughs> yeah who doesn't want a few XML files in <laughs> Edge? Is this Edge? Or am I in? No, no, this is Edge. Or. Yeah. There should be an about 
right? No, right edge. I'm still using the old edge. Warm. Oh, so there's stuff happening. Robots. Why isn't there an XML formatter? So, Red Hat kind of knows stuff for XML files. Java. Okay, I'll, I'll use something else. Format. Configure. I think XML formatter. Is this hard? Thanks. somewhere health checks service unavailable service unavailable okay so that's the health check which is 1955 my 20 30 this is Long time ago, this is today. Mm. Well, I think the backend service is still um, down, so let me turn it on if it's not already started so this one should be available Not load stuff. Yes, that's what I saw sometime earlier. <coughs> I also got the the life. And where is it? Life metrics. So did it. Did this one no, it also failed? It took too long. Okay. Not what I expected. So it's API slash warmer. So that's what I have an edge. Have an edge. Yes, it's a two hundred. Okay. So this should be okay. Oh, 
also this stuff should be okay let me check firefox app service i'm in the now i have to go back to edge oh, i hate switching browsers for this stuff um so i'm in the normal slot over here moving to the staging how's my configuration um, the speaker api url so this one is okay api warm-up 200 so and what if i remove these save continue what if i'm doing a manual slot swap source staging to production Perform swap with preview. No, I don't need this. Swap. So there's the check mark, which was stated in the error. Let's see if this works. It's time. So if you know a good joke, let me know while we're waiting. It looks like... So if this actually takes this long, how long did the swap take in, in the pipeline? So it started at swapping 5608 updated <coughs> the deployment a minute later so it fails a minute later is there something useful over here takes its time also how's the swap going on it's completed look over here so successfully did the swap so apparently it does work via the portal for some reason and not via DevOps. Anyway, um, I have this live view going on. Let's see if there's some warm-up execute. Oh, I see some trace logging. So he executing, health check, stuff like this. Oh, that's good. So logging is on. warm-up controller is being hit 
but was this me or 1001? So this was probably me. So we did the swap. When we did when did we do the swap? Can we still see it? No. Request. So there's a health check. Executing health check. Request finished in one minute. So this looks a bit like what I should be checking for. Request starting. Request finished. A lot of HTTP requests, which take about 38 seconds. One, these are long times. Let's see in the application map how long the invocations take. So they're quite fast. Search for the past hour. Executed and executing. Okay, cool. So this informational logging works now, or at least that's what it looks like. Received HTTP response after. That's a long time. Could the warm-ups, could the warm-up health endpoint, the health checks be causing the relays in the swap? Because if they take two minutes to complete, Why would they take two minutes to complete? Client handler, speaker, ACP client, speaker service. In the weather forecast. Also, why does this... Oh, the weather forecast doesn't exist anymore. Who's invoking this? Who is invoking this? Is this in my solution? Where is it being used? So this one is doing nothing fancy. So it shouldn't be here anymore. I don't need it in this place. This is not used. Maybe some Google indexing. So can I see health check? I know this is the health check. Speaker API health. So this is my health check. Check service. Cancellation token. Hmm. The speaker service health check failed. <coughs> View the end-to-end -end transaction, which fails in Firefox. I think also in Edge on my machine. Anyway, uh, 
I'll be fresh. So, this is a couple of minutes ago. Someone is hitting the weather forecast. Who does this? Oh no, this is speaker shape. Okay, so this is good. This is good. This is me. This is me, and it, it's good. And it returns within. It returns quite fast. Start sending. Sending, start processing. I don't executing help for speaker service. Executing, executed. So 8.55, 8.55, so this is all good. Let's try another, oh, it's here, it's here. Message. Okay. Let's try the the release again. I've did it once manually. See if this works. Create. How long did it take? One and a half minutes. So that's the 90 seconds. I would expect the five three tries, maybe. So in total, this will take one and a half, two, two and a half, three, four and a half, well, about five minutes. So if this deployment fails, I'm calling it a night because then I have to figure out what to do next and that will probably take me another session. And I have stuff to do. Well, other stuff to do. To me, to me that is. Maybe I could check some swap operations over here. So deployment center. Swap failed. Okay, cool. Maybe there's some information. So it's a link to Azure DevOps. Okay, that fails. Deployment credentials, repository. Would be nice to have some details over here on why it fell so, well, probably It probably assumes you will be able to check this out in, uh, in Azure DevOps.
Oh, I can see. So when did it fail? One moment. Why do I get a blank screen now? Hard refresh. Unexpected error. A diagnosis solve problems. Maybe this one uh, is able to help. Or not. Oh, this is so, so annoying. Why does this stuff work? A security error. So what, what's this? I'm not sure. Probably have to unblock this in Pi-hole? No, because it works in Edge. Advanced. Accept and continue. Connection not secure. What is this? Is it telemetry? Diagnose or solve problems. How's the release? No, it's failed again. Took too long. 40 seconds, 40 seconds this time. Took too long or failed. App init module configuration. This could be it, this could be it. So I have, to, I don't have to specify the app settings in the staging slot because I don't have any slot settings. Delete. That, that would actually make some, well, it would cause a reboot. Whoa. Fork, where are you? Okay, there you are. 
Pushing it right away. I assume it's correct. And I'll tap squigglies. Or no red squigglies. So I'm gonna keep this running. Um, I'm calling it a day. I don't want to wait another five minutes to see it fail again or succeed. So I'll get back to you on this in my next session, which will be next Monday. Monday the 4th of May. So at 20, uh, 2030, half past nine, my time, CEST, I will be uh, well doing another session. The 5th of May, I probably, I probably skipped the 5th of May because it's a uh, it's national well, holiday and my employer was kind enough to give all of us a day off. So I'm probably doing something else uh, on the 5th of May. It's, it's like, what's it called in English? It's Vrijdingsdag, which loosely translated is Freedom Day. Or yeah, something like this, uh, which is the day the Dutch or the Netherlands got freed from uh, the German uh, oppressors in World War II and we're celebrating this stuff. Liberation Day. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. So we're off uh, on the 5th of May, so I'll probably be doing something else. Uh, but see you on the, on the 4th of May. Let's do a quick check if the deployment is... No, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. It's not even started, probably. The pipeline is running. So, a bit of an anti-climax today, but uh, hopefully I'll make it up uh, on, the, on the next session. Thank you all for watching and have a great day, evening, night, whatever. Thank you, Martin.